to my viewers or maybe to me as well mm. um when do you need a long cage and a short cage what you need is that you need to have some cage because if not the bed the the derailleur will not be able to handle the um, the large uh, the large chain the large cassette at the back Okay, welcome back to another video guys. Today, we have a... a Allied Alpha. <laughs> Allied Alpha. So, our guest here has actually brought us a different bike. The last time it was a Venge, now we have an Allied Alpha. So, over to you to explain about this bike. Okay, so this is an Allied Alpha. It's a, it's a size S if I'm not wrong. Uh, I've had this for about 3 years, or oh, coming to 4. Uh, so it's different, there are different ver uh, iterations of this, but this is the current iteration I have. Um, so it's an Allied, Allied, uh, Allied, so Allied is a US brand, made in the US, um, and it's handmade in US actually. So it's carbon fiber bike, uh, it's in a carbon nude, that means there's no paint actually on the bike, it's actually uh, laminate, uh, sorry, clear coat. Uh, it's actually an interesting situation where I was a uh, I was uh, I had spare parts running around uh, that was by the point of time and uh, T3 had a pretty good deal so I picked it up for them. Uh, so this is basically the bill based on the spare parts I have. Mm. So based on the parts that I have, okay, this is there were several certain versions of this, but the current version of it is it comes with a zip arrow bar, zip stem, zip handle, uh, zip seat post, uh, a uh, Sally Italia SLR saddle, carbon. Uh, runs on the very old school Shimano uh, Dura Ace 9000 uh, Di2 with a Altegra 6008 rear derailleur or Di2. Uh, it, that's the shift shift kit. Uh, the crank is a Roto 3D F uh, running a power to max type. Uh, I think it's type Echo uh, power meter. It's a crank based power meter with Praxis chain rings. Uh, it has crane kick uh, EE brakes, which is a lightweight uh, option. So that's why the bike is built for lightweight kind of situation. Uh, in this current guise, it's running Zip 303 NSW rim brake uh, wheels uh, on Michelin power uh, tires, 25 millimeters. Right. So uh, yep. uh, I would say it's a lightweight. I would say it's semi semi lightweight setup. Uh, good for all-round riding basically right so let's talk more about you and the bike so you are a 173 I'm 173 so I I'm 173 I have I okay between from the seat to the bottom bracket it's uh, 72 and a half centimeters hmm. so that's the length uh, standard size I normally run um, I run a 120 millimeter stem that stem is actually a negative 17 uh, that's why I have stacks, stack, uh, stacks at the bottom because if I were to run a normal negative 6 then the, the stem actually starts somewhere around where, the, where, it's, where it's slammed and all the way up to the top but because uh, I want, aesthetically I wanted to have a little bit more uh, arrow look because of the arrow bar in front uh, it now runs parallel so the stem is actually negative 17 and it's parallel to the ground versus being uh, upward sloping mm. Um, the, the size of the frame is a 52? It's a 52. So, okay. So, Allied is a very interesting company. So, maybe a bit background on the company. So, Allied actually is a US company. Uh, it was set up maybe five, six years ago. Um, and uh, the frame itself, the geometry is actually very similar to a specialized SL5. Uh, the reason was because designers that, uh, that, that built this bike was actually the designers that built the specialized Tarmax all the way up to the SL5. That's why you can see that after the SL5, the SL6 actually uh, was a new designer which, uh, which specialized then uh, had. So, so that's why, uh, that's why the bikes, this bike had a very similar geometry and, and the SL5 actually was one of my favorite bikes I've ever owned. And, uh, and that's why when Allied came out of this bike with this geometry, I actually was quite intrigued by it. And it solved one of the biggest problems the SL5 had or the Starbuck Tarmax had, which is, this is a BSA BB. 
for so, my guests who are not familiar with bottom brackets, what is a BSA and why is it so good? Okay, so a BSA BB is British standard. Uh, it's a British standard, which basically means it's a threaded BB. Uh, it's based, It normally runs a 24 millimeter crank, but you can run special uh, crank crank bearings, uh, which allow you to run a 30 millimeter crank, which gives you a little bit more stiffness. But the trade-off for that is that you actually have. Um, higher bear, bearing weight uh, wear because the bearings are actually smaller in that sense hmm. but because it's threaded it solves one big problem with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, what do you call press fit bearings and which is the creaking noise it doesn't creak <laughs> uh, wow that's amazing uh, creaking bottom brackets are one of the worst things ever that yes, you can hear yes it is so so this 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 basically is uh, if you want to look at it very similar to an Tarmac SL5 with a threaded BB yeah, uh, what is the weight of the bike? Looking at the components, it's a very light build. So, uh, current build, I think, is about close to 7 kilos, 7, 7.1, I would say. Maybe a bit lighter, I'm how, not sure. How come it's so heavy? Uh, because I believe the 303 NSWs are what, 1, 1.4, 1.4, 1.5 kilos. The power meter is a bit heavier because it's a roto crank with a power to max, so that adds a bit of weight. Uh, but as you say, uh, and the the bar is not a. I mean, it's an arrow bar. It's a like uh, it's a carbon arrow bar. So that has about two hundred plus grams. It's not a. It's not a loss weight mini bars. Yeah. Uh, I'm running an aluminum stem, but I prefer aluminum stem to be honest. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I I I've used certain things to compensate for some weight gain. The frame itself is very light because it has no paint. Uh, the brakes are very light. That's good. Uh, but yeah, it, and, uh oh yeah, the rear derailleur. So that I can run, if I want to travel, I can run a 30, well, a bigger than a 28 in terms of, because it's a long cage. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about the frame. Um, this frame does not has, have a drop seat stay, unlike yes. most bikes now, they're all dropped. Correct. And the tubing on the down tube and the top tube is extremely large. It is. Um, why do you choose this bike and do they come in different variants? Okay, there are two variants on this bike. There is this version, which is basically a, uh, with a with a basically a flat straight uh, top tube, and uh, a, a a smaller head head tube. There is another variant of this bike with a raised head tube. That means there's a bump. Uh, it's like the Pali's that the, of uh, yesteryears where they have a bump in front. That gives you a bit higher uh, well head tube, at, uh, which allows you for people they want to ride a bit not so slammed position. But in this case, when this bike was uh, available. They had only this version and actually I chose this bike because it was nude carbon and uh, it's very unique because I mean with the sun I guess you can see that there is uh, you can see that actually the carbon weave inside hmm. the and it's basically just carbon with a coat a clear coat in front hmm. and uh, wow what was my question so is this meant to be an aero bike or a climbing bike ah it's an all-rounder bike in a sense <laughs> I, I, SL7 it's a sense it's like an SL7, but it's like an SL5 because it's more like an SL5. Right. Uh, it's a lightweight bike. Uh, the only reason why I put in a carbon, uh, uh, arrow bar was because um, at the moment of time I was thinking, I mean, it, it's nice to have a bit of arrow, arrow features. And since I'm running the NSWs, I thought maybe uh, I, I want to have, okay. So as I said, there were a few iterations of this, bar, of this bike. And previously I had round bars on this. And uh, I had some fitting issues, uh, so I had some er uh, elbow, uh, sorry, uh, shoulder problems. So uh, because I actually, I actually went too narrow. These are forty mil These are forty four hundred millimeters, uh, center to center, and I actually went to a thirty eight millimeter center to center. And I had issues where my shoulders were hurting after long rides. That means that after about 70, 80k, I will have some shoulder pain. So uh, to elevate to the issue, I actually went with a wider back to a wider bar, and at that point of time, I was thinking, well, since I've, round, I've done round tubes, myself round try arrow, since they say arrow is everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how how is the performance both on climbs and on the flats? So it's an all rounder bike. So uh, previously, I had two or twos. Uh, two, two or two fire crests on it and those were really really good when you come to climb so the bike with the two or two fire crests was about around 6.8 kilos so just at UCI limit uh, with these NSWs which are slightly heavier uh, they are they are okay uh, it's good for all-round riding I mean um, 
for, for my kind of riding, which is basically just Singapore riding right now, because I can't go anywhere overseas, uh, it's perfectly fine. But actually, I built this bike so that I could bring it overseas in the future. Um, and because rim, rim brakes are easier, I mean, you don't have to travel with it. Um, although I have a project later that will may, may supersede this. Uh, but generally speaking, I would say that uh, it's a good all-rounder. I mean, if you want to ride in a pack, no problem. If you want to ride, climb with it, no problem. It will do everything, maybe call it jack of all trades, master of none. Mm. Uh, in your previous interview, you came here, you brought us a uh, disc brake bench. This yes. one is a rim. Yes. So, I know we've, we've discussed rim versus disc. Uh, for those who have not watched the other video, what is your opinion on rim versus disc? Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the future. And there, is, there are definitely benefits for this. I really, as I mentioned in my video, previous video, uh, I can tell you the modulation for this is way, 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 way much better than rim. I mean, with, even with this, with these NSWs, with the what they call the showstopper brake brake uh, brake tracks, right? Uh, it's still it will work well in the dry, where rim actually starts for me. Uh, I mean, really, really, I, I find that when rim starts to have problems in terms of modulation, in terms of stopping, is when it gets really, really wet, and that's where this to me really, really comes really to uh, to, to 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 its benefit uh, where. You can modulate well, you can stop this. The issue is not stopping power, it's always about modulation. That means that how much more do I need to, you know, to apply more so that I don't lock up my brakes. Because rim brake, this brakes, you will still lock up the brakes. The issue is that, 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 that uh, I will call it as a margin of error where you can, you can slow yourself down without locking your brakes up. And for me, especially in the wet, rim brakes, are not as good as disc brakes, unfortunately. Why do you need a long cage? So that, okay, so this is a 11, this is a 11.30 cassette. But let's say if I want to run a 11.32, the Dura-Ace cannot handle a 32, unless you have extender. Mm. So with this, this allows me to run a 32. And as I mentioned before, if I want to travel, I may want to have 30 actually, to be honest, it should be okay. Uh, even the steepest mountains, I've gone up, uh, I've gone up on a 30, Oh, by the way, this is a compact crank. <laughs> Old man, you cannot go too hard. So it's a compact crank. So it's a 34, 30. I can actually go up most most mountains that I've climbed before. To my viewers or maybe to me as well, hmm. um, when do you need a long cage and a short cage? The difference, why you have a long, why do you need a long cage and a short So normal short cage, the old derailers, for example, from Dura Ace, let's say 9001, they could take up to a 28 safely. Maybe oh sorry, thirty safely. This is previous. This generation, which is nine thousand, could only take up to a twenty eight safely. Whereas uh, the Dura, the Altigras could take up to a thirty two. So what you need is that you need to have some cage because if not the bed, the the derailleur will not be able to handle the um, the large uh, the large chain, the large cassette at the back. So for me to if I want to travel, especially if you're going to places where are hilly. Uh, Thailand, for example, or Taiwan, for example, where you really get big mountains, you're climbing for three hours, two hours, four hours, that kind of stuff. Uh, you want a low gear to so that you can, you know, just pump out the RPMs and keep going. Because Singapore, I can tell you, la, you can, you, all you need to do is shove it to a big gear, shove it to, you know, stand up and then you can power through. Even the, sh the longest climb in Singapore is less than eight minutes. Whereas when you're overseas, you'll be climbing for three to four hours. That's where you need a big gear, and that big gear requires you to have a, a bit of a a bit of a longer derail, uh, derail cage so that you can handle that big gear. Uh, what happens if you run a short cage? Okay, if you run a short cage, what will happen is that the, the, the it, it won't run up because what happens if you look at your chain, right? Your chain line will your chain line will not be able to handle. First and foremost, you, there's not enough chain. So what happens if you if you run a big big gear right? What happens? Your derailleur will be swing all the way out uh. to and it could potentially hit your chainstay. It, it causes a lot of stress. Yeah. It will cause a lot of stress and you will actually cause the the that derailleur to break because especially when you're climbing and you're putting a lot of torque. What happens is that if you if the derailleur and the chain is stretched out, it will break the chain or you'll break the derailleur. Will it break the hanger or will it bend the hanger or, you, that, or the well, derailleur will give that first? will be the best way la. The best thing is the hanger will, will bend. If the hanger bends, just change it. Just change it. But you break a derailleur, break a chain. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> the consequences tend to be a little bit more uh, severe. Right, right. 
Oh, okay. I never knew that. I just know that yeah, bigger cassette, a uh, bigger uh, chain, the cock usually need a bigger. A yeah, but if you notice, right, what happens is that as you get into a bigger, bigger, bigger cassette, right, the 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 the, the derailleur comes down and down and down and down and down. So if you notice, if you if you run a normal 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 derailleur, so that's why the new generation derailleurs are are almost semi long, right, semi length, because they can take a bigger chain ring, a bit bigger cassette, and if they don't do that, right, it will break your your. You'll, you'll break your chain, mm. or break your chain, or break your set, or okay. your, your hanger. Yeah. This is going to be super light, super quiet. And it's not new, very quiet. Oh. And I always get questions, people asking me, hey, how do I choose a bike? So now yes. with current pandemic, they don't have stocks in the shop. So normally I always tell people, go to the bike shop, test out the different sizes, but Correct. now obviously you can't do that. Correct. So what is your advice, someone who wants to buy a bike, do they look at the chart and just follow accordingly or do they downsize? Okay, uh, they should look at the chart to kind of get to gauge what they need to do. And like me, I'm actually between sizes. So I'm actually between a size uh, for specialized or, or some certain brands, uh, I'm between a small and a medium. Old school thought is if you're stuck between sizes, go on, go to the lower, smaller size. Now the reason because of that is more the fact that you can use your stem and your seat post to manage the the difference. Generally speaking, I would say that go try it out. Uh, if you have friends that have the same similar size, let them go and try it. Uh, if you have friends, if you if you want to try something different. Uh, yeah, go go and ask go and ask around. Lah. I'm very sure somebody has something in your size. Lah. So I'm uh, exactly the same height as you. I'm also in between. I'm talking about in terms of specialized, uh. right? So before I bought my SL6, I was in between a 52 and a 54. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to try a bigger frame for comfort. So mm -hmm. people always say a bigger frame might be more comfortable. But I had an issue with that because the top two was way too long. Mm -hmm. I had to shorten the stem. It looks really ugly on the bike. Yeah. Um, and so one tip that my friend told me this was that measure your current bike setup, the dimensions, and then from there you can kind of guess and look at the, the, the new bike that you're going to get and what are the dimensions Correct. there. Because it, it varies from sizes. You cannot just look at SML, right? No, and no, then no, bring no, it no, over. no, no. You need to look at, for example, your, your stack, your reach, yeah. your top tube length. Normally, right. for me, old school is I look at top tube length. So there is a certain top tube length that normally would fit me. Uh, the, the, the seat tube doesn't quite matter because as long as your, you have a seat post, right, that can be managed. Uh, but the top tube length is actually quite important because that's where you put the center of our body. Mm. And uh, of course, there's a bit of reach issues, uh, but the, the, normally you have a stem to offset it. Mm. But with the new tar current, oh, that's why I kind of like this uh, old school stuff. Uh. <laughs> you, can, you can choose your own seat post, you, yeah. can, choose your own, you can choose your own stem. Yeah. For example, I run a zero, zero offset uh, seat, seat post, which, is, uh, which puts me a bit more forward. Uh, some people like to ride back, so they ride maybe like a 20 millimeter offset, which is putting you putting more weight back. So depends on your riding style. Also depends on your comfort level. Uh. The, the the way I will do it is that old school is that you must be able to ride in the drops for at least for a long period of the time. If you're only riding in the hoods, then you're actually los losing out one one of the riding uh, positions and your riding because you actually as you ch to be comfortable, you need to be able to change positions. Mm. Especially when you're descending, you need to be riding actually in the drops if possible. Actually, I, I did watch a video. Uh, they said the most aero position where you can get the most watt savings, right? Yes. Is on the hoods with a 90 degree Correct. angle arm, not Correct. the drops. Not the drops. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's one thing that you need to master because even I'm still learning doing the drops and booting at a very aero, doing just, yeah. just booting at 90 degree, 90 right? Degrees. So you, I you literally fire. have to have. So actually, the, the, well, which I try my very best is that I try and keep as, uh, as bent as possible. And as you say, like, Keep your sh shoulders narrow. Mm. So that's why they are, that's why I was gonna try the, the 38 mm 38 centimeter <laughs> bar, which was narrow. Yeah. But then uh already la, yeah. the and, and and getting in that position requires a lot of training your core muscles Correct. as well, right? Correct. It's not easy just to look at it and do it. You try no. doing TMCR all the way doing that, it's, it's, hard. it's tiring. It's very hard. So yeah. so yeah, you that's why you need to supplement it with other if you wanna if you really wanna be good at this, you need to supplement with other 
non-riding exercises to keep yourself you know in that shape yeah so it's not just getting the ospw and no. stuff it's your riding position that matters Correct. the most actually Correct. yeah and i think now most new cyclists try to buy speed buy i mean i mean buy speed as in buying expensive bikes buying expensive gadgets mm. thinking that they can go faster yeah maybe it will last for a couple of you know yep. months when you first get it you feel hey, it's too much faster of course you'll feel much faster than your older bike but i think for it to sustain right it's your body position and all those things that, that so the most. setting yourself up in terms of getting your body position in that arrow position or whatnot and also in the terms of if you want to buy speed that speed actually comes from a few things uh. the bike itself will give you speed but the, it's it's still the engine um, and the long and short is that if, if, is that you need to tr if you want to ride well, if you want to enjoy your riding, uh, you need to have a, you, you, you try and have a good engine. Uh, I mean, try and, I mean, so, so, so this is one of the things that, uh, uh, if any of the new, new riders, I say, you know, do your riding, make sure you get the right position. I mean, uh, spend time in getting your position right, rather than spend time on equipment. Because yeah. equipment, I tell you like, every year there'll be new stuff coming out. Like. They want you to spend money. They want you to spend money. <laughs> I'm, 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 this, is, this is, to be honest, one of my most comfortable bikes I ride. And yeah. to be honest, it's, I mean, you do, ask me to do century, half centuries, I can do that, no problem. I mean, if you want to get faster, un unfortunately, no easy way out. No easy way out. Like. I think <laughs> it's just, I mean, have fun, enjoy your riding. Uh, I'm not, I mean, you shouldn't be dreading to go train, go riding, that, that defeats the whole purpose of riding. I mean, I enjoy riding because it's a way of de relieving stress, it's a way of getting fit. So, yeah, I've but been riding for 20 years. Yeah, and I think now cycling has taken, you know, road cycling wasn't very popular back then. It's just yeah. until recently, everyone owns a road bicycle. Yeah, uh, someone told me, uh, and this is quite valid information, uh, cycling now in Singapore is the third most popular sport in Singapore after walking and running <laughs> oh my god yeah because of this uh, explosion of cycling yeah. and i think it's a good thing uh it's good that that cycling has has grown to to the level it is i mean it's not just about roadies I'm, I'm not talking about roadies i'm talking about roadies your pcn riders your you know your father mother you know all these people i mean people are using it not just for transportation but a form of exercise their form of uh you know you know work or whatever not but it's 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 a good thing to have and i really really believe that uh that's the way to go la. i mean the government really says a uh, car like society which whatever that means uh. mm. i mean i still drive a car <laughs> but uh yeah i mean i hope to i think i mentioned to you i write i write I, I wrote more last year than i drove <laughs> uh i think uh, that's about it actually uh, do you have anything else to top up i think i'm fine i yeah. think i mean if you have any other questions, let me know. I will yeah. be more than willing to answer your questions. I mean, especially rim brake versus disc brakes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how can people get in touch with you? Because I know I didn't post this, but maybe people have more questions. So I think you both send a, send a question to you and you I'll can direct it to you. Write to me and okay. I'll definitely... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post all the specs on my description of the video. I'll get it from you later no on. Problem, no problem. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'm so sorry that I didn't post this because I didn't know I was getting this, but it's okay. We, at least we filmed this and you guys have questions, just, just post it in the comments. And that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for coming. We filmed two bikes today. Let's film the rest of the bike. Hopefully, we still have sunlight. Yeah, and uh, that's the end. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.